I'll remember Apothecary Diaries. I might just start it up again, and this video is about that. Why people are going crazy for this Chinese anime from Karu. Let me know. Anime girls are about as interesting as two rats fighting in soup. This is why Sakura here, okay? Because they're useless. Two rats fighting in the soup. That's the analogy you're going to get. That's why she's here. Actually, that looks pretty cool. They're about as interesting as two rats fighting in the ring. Make no mistake, however. It's not the okay. character's fault that they have the personality of a tin can. You're not mad at Sakura because she... Does she have a tin personality of a tin can? The personality of a tin can. Doesn't she like Naruto, but then she gets like cucked because like she doesn't know what to say, but Sakura... But then Naruto gets cucked because Sakura's after Sasuke and, Sa and Sasuke doesn't give a fuck. And technically Sasuke and Naruto are secret lovers because they kissed. And you're not mad at Sakura because she's annoying. You're mad at Sakura. She's useless. She doesn't do shit. But you know what? From the recent Jujutsu Kaisen episode, at least Sakura didn't get off like Nobara, dude. Because Kishimoto sucks dick at writing female characters. And this female character in particular is the... Goaded. I think this girl is goaded, right? Polar opposite of that. Mama from Apothecary Diaries is undeniably the waifu of the season. She's smart, she's witty, she doesn't fall for the mm. first hot guy she sees, and most importantly... What? I can't believe I just used waifu unironically. Oh my god, what the hell is wrong with me? I gotta get some help. It's alright. Oh. Hey, Hashtag ad? Help but notice that I'm using Opera GX. This video is sponsored Hashtag by... Hashtag ad Opera GX. Use the discount code GARU for your first 10% off subscription for your free ad service now with the regular scheduled content. And thanks to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. Yeah, yeah. Imperial China. Spanning over 2,000 years, this period in history was known for spreading Confucianism. This period in history was known for having a palace where there's one emperor and 1,000 concubines, where all of their job is to produce offsprings. It is the palace of milf. That first episode we saw together, my god, the women design is fantastic. Now, this sounds really bad. G women should not be just like a breeding tool, right? We're talking in the context of the anime in that cultural point, okay? I'm not saying this is a good thing or bad thing, but goddamn, their designs are insane. Standardized testing the Chinese language, and guys having their wee-wees cut off. And that's crazy. Like, like straight up, guys in this palace cannot have balls. Because if you do, there's a chance that you might be horny and you might try to fuck around with one of the concubines. And that's a no-no, right? You want to keep, you know, the succession wars will happen and starts like that. So all the guys in this palace have to have their fucking, they gotta get castrated. Isn't that insane? Like, what the f And the main guy is also another one of them. It's a eunuch, right? It's an insane concept. Like, would you volunteer to be a eunuch? I guess back then, these people probably got really comfortable lives. If they live in the palace like this, like, compared to living in poverty, I bet, like, voluntarily, like, castrating yourself so you could join the palace, it probably kind of sets you up for life, right? That's kind of cr crazy, though. I, I don't know if I'd ever do that. Meet Mama. One day after her father instructs her to deliver medicine to the... She gets fucking kidnapped and sold in a palace. Insane start. Local ladies. Oh, she damn. suddenly gets kidnapped by a gang of thieves and sold off. <laughs> Just as casual human trafficking immediately to start off. No, okay. not because she's a girl and girls are illegal in China. Sort of. But be whoa, 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 whoa. Girls are... Because she's a girl and girls are illegal in China. Oh, I think it's just like, uh, what's it called? Oh, I thought they were going to talk about like the, the multiple, like how most people want sons because they can only have one child policy and stuff like in the past. Sort of. But because she's a girl, so she's legally born to serve the emperor. She initially starts off as a court maid, but soon after the high-ranking concubines get sick, she uses her extensive knowledge mm. of poisons to cure them and later gets promoted to the role of poison tester. Now, after hearing all that, I want you to tell me something. Okay. Where the fuck have you heard of a premise this unique? First off, this anime takes place in China. A whole this is true. Like, the whole setting of this, like, you could maybe... It's not even a harem show. No, it's not a harem show. Like, this story style is completely unique. In the world of these random-ass fucking, like, bullshit isekai, power fantasy, magic high school, harem, rom-com, etchy shit that we've seen so far, Apothecary Diaries from episode one that I've seen so far, so fucking unique. I've never seen a different setting like this. Maybe this kind of show already exists in a lot of Chinese content and we're not aware of it. So this is maybe our first time getting a grasp of, of like a huge saturated niche like this. Maybe a bunch of shows like this already exist. But from what I've seen from anime, this is really unique. Whole new different setting than we're used to unless you watch shows like these, which in that case... Never seen it. Welcome. It's usually just dudes in here, so I hope that's okay. Chinese culture is so rich and fascinating that it feels refreshing to see it being presented in mainstream anime. Last time China entered the mainstream, John Cena was in a car eating- Bing chilling! It's kind of insane that John Cena, the WWE reg like, legend that I've been watching as a child, is fucking speaking just fluent Chinese Ice now. cream. She went bing chilling! Bing Someone chilling! doesn't know a ton about Chinese culture other than the general stuff, everything being shown to me was new. 
It was original. Did you know they use hairpins as a promise of love to someone you want to marry? Okay. Me neither. Me learning about Chinese culture this way is like going to Japan and having Ichiran ramen. It sounds bad. I think, isn't Ichiran ramen like the most touristy thing you could do? That's like going to McDo going to like America and trying a McDonald's. It's like your cultural thing. It's like, it's not going to be like the best because food. Because it is. <laughs> While I like to think that the setting is visually representative of China back in the day, that's about where the comparison ends. It's okay. pretty surface level. Sure, you've got the eunuchs, the herbal medicine, the concubines, and their political standing. But aside from a few fun facts about this is how China used to be, there's not a lot of actual history attached to this anime. I'm yeah, like how much like actual Chinese cultural relevancy are we seeing from this show? I don't know. That's why I'm like, hmm, okay, we have like a palace here, a bunch of eunuchs. But beyond that, does it actually dig more into the Chinese culture? I don't think the show needs to. I think we just need like a very surface level understanding of the culture here and then the story can be just whatever it wants totally to be. Totally fine with that because nothing screams Chinese more than this anime is not from China. <laughs> In every single episode, there's a disclaimer that says this world is fictional and bears no resemblance to blah, 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 blah. I, I think that's for like legal rights. I think this is so the author doesn't get shit for misinformation. And yeah. she shouldn't because honestly, who the fuck cares? It's already set in a fictional world. So as much as I want to sit here and type out every single inaccuracy this anime has towards Chinese culture, I don't. It's unnecessary. The general vibe is there, so I'm not complaining. The only thing I think this show could have benefited from is Chinese dubbing. God, can you imagine how cool this anime would sound if it was in Chinese? That would be interesting. As Mao Mao looks at Jinshi, her gaze begins to wander. Oh. She starts getting flustered. Jinshi, never breaking eye contact, looks at her intently until they lock eyes. He says, mm. May I have no balls. Mao Mao is up. I'm gonna assume that Karu might be like a someone like me, like a like I'm a Korean, like I'm I'm a Korean person that immigrates to Canada. So Karu might be like a Chinese-born person that immigrates too. So like his Chinese is probably not that good there. Right? One more time. One more. One more time. Wonder. She starts getting flustered. <laughs> Does anyone speak Chinese here? Is this fluent? She, never breaking eye contact, looks at her intently until they lock eyes. <laughs> he says. Mm. WeChat ma, the only Chinese I know that I learned from school is wo chao. No, wo wo chao. I mean, wo chao. No, wo chao means like I fuck. I think is wo chao ma. Ni wo wo chao ni ma de pigu. I think that's what it. Is. And then there's the other canto, which is do. I think right do. Mama is unlike any. I'm getting fucking demonetized on this video. The other anime girl you've seen. I'm gonna say something super cringe, but. She's just like one of the boys. She reminds me a lot okay. of Senku from Dr. Stone, and largely what made Senku an interesting character applies Science. here to Mao Mao as well. They're both incredibly smart, super resourceful, but it's really their insatiable thirst for knowledge that makes these anime super fun to watch. When you can tell that someone is passionate about what they do, it makes you want to learn about it too, because I'll admit it, I want to feel like a smartass. Watching Mao Mao make Chinese medicine gives me the same level of excitement as seeing Senku create a new invention. That's a good point. I think even if you're not aware of the topic, passion rubs off. So even if you are completely new and you would have never really found that topic interesting, if someone's super passionate about it, you'll just watch and you'll be like, wow, this is kind of fascinating. Regardless, the mystery aspect of this show is easily the icing on the cake. You don't know this, but Mao Mao uses her own experience with poison to create a diagnosis. She doesn't yeah. read it off a book or learn it from someone else. No, she literally sees people around her die and makes these observations. Damn. She willingly lets snakes bite her arm in the effort of studying poison. Okay, that might be a little bit too much, but you're right. Yeah, this is... Someone also did say this anime is pretty much like an isekai pharmacist. This should tell you how morbidly... Which is actually kind of insane if you think about it. Think about it. Or why, why hasn't there been like an isekai pharmacist or like an isekai doctor show yet, right? Someone from like modern world with these crazy, like the best doctor in Japan is like killed and now sent back into this old times where, you know, modern medicine is, the medicine at that time isn't even close. So the doctor goes around saving a bunch of people and like, think about it. Think about the potential. I'm surprised that a show like that doesn't exist. In Korean drama, a bunch of shows like that do exist. There are shows like this? Oh, never mind. Curious this character is, which starts to suck once you realize that women during this time weren't even allowed to read. 
So and that's a huge thing, right? The fact that all the women here, they're literally illiterate. They cannot read. So one of the things that Jingxi did in episode one was grab all the women in here, right? In the palace, because they're trying to find out who did this, who found who found the cure, because they must be smart. And then he like put down this like like a written thing of like, if you can read this or something, you stay here after this or something. And then that's how he found Mamo. I, I think that's what happened. But yeah, all, none of the women are like literate. They're literally just like breeding. They're just for breeding, which is pretty fucked up. So this is the only feasible way Mau Mau can learn about this stuff. This aspect offers so much sympathy and relatability to our character that you can't help but root for her. The fact that she got kidnapped and sold off to work as a slave and her reaction is just, hey, oh, okay. what can you do? I think she honestly has a better life here because now she's kidnapped because like where she was in episode one, she was living in the boonies. So it was so chill, nonchalant. She like shrugged it. She's like, all right, whatever. I got kidnapped. Cool. I'm in a palace now. So fucking badass. However, don't mistake her nonchalance for indifference. Mama doesn't let her personality detract her from having morals. Most of the time she can be stupid and goofy, mm. but when shit gets serious, so she gets serious. Oh! oh! That's a spoiler. <laughs> oh, I makes me want to watch the show more though. Look at this. Oh. Slap her again. Oh, you drag her? To drop the good girl act. Now, Jinshi, he's the eye. context. He gives off massive Gojo vibes, stemming from the fact that he acts super carefree and can impregnate yeah. six different women just by. Except he doesn't have balls or dick, right? Now, I don't know what castrate really means. Does that mean his balls are gone? Is the dick also gone? Is the shaft intact? I don't really know how that works. Can he have sex? I don't know, but he can't have kids. Looking at them, and before you ask, yes, he's also, yeah, you know, you know. Oh, shit, how funny would it be if we found out he's just not cut? He's like, hmm, you fools. <laughs> he secretly had a dick the entire time. Yo, like, it's, imagine, I, I, imagine you're a bunch of eunuchs back in the day, right? You imagine you're a eunuchs back in the day, and then suddenly, next week. It's it, 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 okay. Think about this. You're about to apply for a role in the palace to be promised a really good and luxurious life. So now you go in and you're like, you know what? I'm gonna get my dick snipped off because that's the only way that I can uh, have this like um, elite status in the palace as a man. Next week, we've discovered vasectomy, and then everyone's like, "Are you fucking serious? I have my dick and balls chopped out permanently when you just discovered vasectomy next week." That would destroy me. That would fucking destroy me, dude. I have deceived you, for I have- How could you live with yourself if vasectomy was discovered like a week after you joined? Been hiding it this whole time. I, in fact, do have a penis. <clears throat> wow. His relationship with Mama is different too, cause Mama is the only girl who doesn't find him hot. So I guess logically, mm. the only way to move forward is to go full dream mode and try to groom his way into her heart. She's seven. Okay. Back in the day, it's a bit different. You couldn't already tell. His assistant Gao Shun even tells her to stop giving him any more attention. Why the hell would he say that? Wait, he actually has a dick. I actually, like that the no, no, P no. The anime doesn't no? immediately ship these two together. I think Mao Mao being her own person is infinitely more interesting than her being in a relationship. I say this knowing that this anime will likely eventually somehow make these two fall in love yeah how much is evident given the way the show is going but i hope they let us explore mama's backstory first before moving on to the whole romance part of the story and lastly i want to touch on the animation it's good i don't think it's anything groundbreaking but at this point anything's better than jujutsu kaisen that's a fuck mappa don't, please don't kill me the colors are vibrant and it works well since the anime is more light-hearted and comedic than you think Jingxi, is that you? Hey, you looking a little bust in there. Overall, the show was very enjoyable to watch. I don't think it's going to be my anime of the season, but it's definitely an anime worthy of your time. Thanks for watching as always. See you on the next one. Y'all know what to do. Give this video a like. Subscribe to his channel if you did. But yeah, Apothecary Diaries, we already did check out episode one. I'm just really behind because there's a lot of different shows we're watching. I might try to watch this again. We might check it out. But if you haven't watched Apothecary Diaries, highly recommended. At least watch season, you know, episode one. Go do it.